Joe? I drive to Tucson a Mara bugs me. It'd be a lot easier if he met us. Hey, wait a minute. Why don't you tell him to do that? You don't tell Newton North anything. We do all the work and he just sits back and collects. Yeah. Ready on your call to Tucson. Go ahead, please. Hello, Mr. North. I thought you ought to know we're winding up our deal here tomorrow. The entire collection? All $140,000 worth. Then barring accidents, you should be in Tucson late tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll wait for you here at my office. With money. And be sure we've got reservations on that midnight plane to Mexico City. Right. Hey, Joe. Huh? I still think he ought to meet us. Oh, shut up. What are we going to use tomorrow? The gas pan. Here, check it. in setting up roadblocks. That's the third out-of-state diamond heist this year, Frank. Yeah, and every one of them led right back here to Arizona. Diamond salesman, victim, gas pen. Same method of operation. Well, at least that jeweler they shot got the last three numbers on the license plate. Marshal's office. One moment. Frank, Bailey, police headquarters. Gas lieutenant. I have to disagree with you. Three robberies in a row makes it more than a coincidence. Marshal's office. No, I still think the brains behind these diamond robberies is operating right here in Arizona. Now, how long ago? Give me the location. Right. Well, we'll have to take them alive and make them talk. Otherwise, we'll never find out. Frank? Hold it, Lieutenant. Sheriff's car is chasing a black sedan on Route 11. What about the license? It fits. Did you get that, Lieutenant? All right, set up roadblocks. Let's go. should have met us. How far away from Tucson? Three, four miles. But they'll have it blocked in all directions. What are we going to do now, Schooner? Well, there's a ranch a half a mile back. I'll head for it and see if I can get a ride into town. Wait a minute. What about me? You keep going. Ditch the car. I'll meet you at North's office.
Who's in this with you? Huh? Who's in this with you? Schooner. He's, he's taken the diamonds. To, he's taken... Go on. I checked his car, Frank. The diamonds are missing. We'll have to get his partner before he crosses the border. You stay with him, Buck. All right. If I was. How did this happen? Muller must have got it after I left him. Well, I don't like it. I don't like running this kind of risk. Well, what kind of a risk do you think I took to deliver these? There you are. Ah, they're beautiful. Now, you can spend the rest of your life admiring them. Just pay me off. The city's alive with cops. How are you going to get away? Well, you're the brains. You tell me. I don't know. Well, start thinking while you get my money. Now open that safe. Come on. you're not going to be able to use those airline reservations to Mexico City. It'll be easy with a respectable man like yourself along. I'm not going. Oh, yes, you are. Once we're in the clear, you can get yourself another boy. I'm through taking chances. You think I want to end up like Muller? some sort of a coroner's hearing? Yes, you'll have to appear at the inquest, Mr. North. Well, it's been a, a long, grueling evening, Lieutenant, so if there are no further questions... Oh, that'll be all. If there's anything else I can do, please don't hesitate to call on me. Okay. Good night. Good night. Oh, good evening, Marshal. Good evening, Mr. North. Are you satisfied with the story? Told me the same story as when I called you from his office. I know, but I've been thinking about it. I'm not satisfied with any part of it. Oh, now, wait a minute, Frank. North is a reputable businessman. He killed Schooner in self-defense. I could have murdered him and shut him up, too. You think North was waiting for Schooner? Did you ever hear of a professional thief pulling two big jobs in one day? You trying to tell me North's been fencing the loot from these diamond jobs? Well, there must be some reason for the trail of every one of them leading back here to Tucson. Did Homicide check the contents of his safe? No, I didn't see any reason to at the time. Well, the heat on, North could have panicked, knocked Schooner off, and come out smelling like a rose. Too late to check the safe now. We better put North under surveillance for the next 24 hours, check his daily activities, friends, acquaintances. Buck, you dig into his financial and business background. Now, if you need special authorization, you can get it through the Treasury Department in Washington. All right. I'll put a tail on him, Frank. Good, Jim. <laughs> Coroner's jury clears Newton North. Did the local police come up with anything at all on him? Zero. How'd you make out? According to his income tax returns, reports from the bank and the Better Business Bureau, he's a triple-A honest citizen. Yeah? Well, the National Diamond Merchants are not so sure of it. This is a list of their salesmen? Yeah. Including the three men that have been held up the past year. Every one of them tried to sell North first. Made it easy for him to put the finger on him. Yeah, it seems that way. Finds a collection he wants, gets the salesman's route, and he hires a couple of crooks and sits back and relaxes until they deliver. Now, all we have to do is prove it. It's pretty circumstantial, Frank. 
After the way that Vegas job backfired, North's liable to call it quits. Not if he thinks he's in the clear. According to this letter, there's a salesman in town right now by the name of Jerry Cress. And? I figure we could get Cress to cooperate with us. Mr. North just might get the sudden urge to go back into business as usual. <laughs> I didn't even intend to call on Newton North this trip. But I'd be willing to help if you think it'll do any good. Well, we appreciate that, Mr. Chris. Maybe you could show him something special. Yeah, I've uh, got a new shipment here from Amsterdam. A quarter of a million of the finest blue whites west of the Mississippi. Well, if that doesn't work, nothing will. Yeah, it'd be funny if you decided to buy the whole lot. Not if we can get them for nothing. Oh, by the way, I'll have to show them to him this afternoon. I'm leaving for Los Angeles this evening. Oh, yes, this card you gave me. Now, can I reach you at this Los Angeles address? All next week. Good luck, Mr. Chris. <laughs> You're the one that's going to need it. Thank you. I'll get in touch with you soon. Get me Newton North at Capital 70359. I know that Tailing North has led us into a blind alley up till now, Lieutenant. If I were in his shoes, I wouldn't make a move even if I had a pass to the Kimberly Diamond Mines. Five will get you ten after seeing Cress's collection. North will figure that's exactly what he does have. I hope you're right. Will do, Frank. Right. I want that tale on Newton North continued until further notice. Well, Tony, have you thought it over? Yep. The answer's no. Oh, well, it's not like you to change your mind after coming here all the way from Los Angeles. I think your luck ran out with that Vegas job. Oh, so that's what's worrying you, huh? Well, you can forget about it. <laughs> the way you're forgetting Schooner and Mud. Oh, Tony, you and Vic Muto are in a different league. That's right. And we'll do all right without you. Ah, but you'll do much better with me. I'm on a level with you, Tony. This next one's my last job. There's enough in it for us all to retire. No dice. Well, you and Vic can cut up a hundred G's. If you're conning me, North, there's a salesman by the name of Jerry Cress with a quarter of a million dollars worth of diamonds waiting for you in Los Angeles. How do you know? He showed them to me day before yesterday. Magnificent stones. All right, North, we'll go along. But you try double-crossing me the way you did Schooner. And this is going to be your last job for sure. Shall we get some lunch? Casual Observer, Newton North, and Business Associate. Thank you, Pete. Hmm. Well, in this case, the Business Associate has to have a record a mile long. Tony Davis, isn't it? Bingo. Sure, one of the shrewdest crooks in the business. How often have Davis and North met? Several times. Davis living alone in town? Probably has a partner somewhere. Excuse me. Yes. Call for Lieutenant oh, Bailey. It's for you, Jim, on one. Oh. Lieutenant Bailey. Tony Davis just made reservations on the train for Los Angeles. Well, now we know where he's going. You want him to? No. I started this thing. I'd like to handle it. Forget it, Joe. Frank will handle it. Yes, Mark. Yes, give me a reservation on the first plane into Los Angeles. And put a call through to Lieutenant Robert Story, Homicide Division, Los Angeles Police Headquarters. Yes, sir. What can I do, Frank? Here. Get a hold of Jerry Crest for me in Los Angeles and tell him I'm coming out there. Yes? Oh, uh, hello, Bob. It's Frank Morgan in Tucson. Say, I'm going to need your cooperation on a diamond robbery. 
Yeah, I'll clear it through the U.S. Marshal's office in Los Angeles. Well, the robbery hasn't happened yet, but it's going to. Yeah? Well, you could start off by running a make on a Tony Davis. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you. Nice to see you again. It's been a long time since we worked together. It sure has. Look, maybe if you fill me with all the details, I can be a little more help, huh? Did you run a make on this Tony Davis? Yeah, our records show he works with a partner. It's a Vic Muto. Lives here in Los Angeles. Vic Muto? It's a new one on me. Got a light on him? Well, our boys are working on it. I got a couple of men are waiting to tail Davis as soon as he gets off the train at Union Depot. Suppose he gets off in Alhambra. No strain. I got a couple boys working there. That's the way we do things in the big city. What worries me is how are you going to nab them? Did you ever set a bear trap, Lieutenant? Bear trap? That's the way we do things in the country. like a hound dog ever since you called me from Tucson. Has he uh, shown the diamonds to any customers yet? Has his first appointment tomorrow in there. Who is a jeweler named Phil Meltzer? You uh, in case the setup? Mm. Meltzer's office is on the second floor. I have a diagram right here. Yeah, that's good. partner, Vic Muto, picked him up in Alhambra, drove out to Beverly Hills and into a hotel in Hollywood. What they were doing in Beverly Hills? They spent about 20 minutes checking a building at 205 and a half North Rodeo Drive. Did they say what kind of building? Owned by Phil Meltzer, wholesale jewelers. Probably one of Chris's customers. Think it's about time he starts setting that bear trap? Yeah. You say you haven't shown your collection of diamonds to any of your customers yet. As a matter of fact, I have an appointment to show them tomorrow. Where? Beverly Hills. Phil Meltzer, 205 and a half North Rodale Drive. Oh, yes, but how did you... Never mind, I won't ask. Do you think it may be tomorrow? I'll answer your question this way, Mr. Chris. Do you carry a gun? As a rule. We'll try not using it. We'd like to take these men alive if possible. Well, my wife feels the same way about me. Well, speaking of your wife, you'd better call her and tell her you'll be late tonight. Got a lot of details to work out. Bob, get out that map of Beverly Hills. Let's take a look at it. Cress's tail ever since he took the diamonds out of the bank vault this morning. 104 to Story. 104 to Story. Story 104, come in. Muto and Davis stopped tailing Cress and parked their car in the Wilshire garage. Still with them? No, we lost them. There are six entrances to the street. Well, keep looking and call back. Maybe they changed their mind. They'll be here. Part of the building covered? Yeah, plus extra squad cars on Rodeo Drive. I better follow Cress inside. Good, I'll double check up in front.
think it was crazy to use a cab instead of our own car. You know what happened in Vegas when Muller and Schooner's car stole in the getaway? Messed up the whole job. You think it's going to be any easier walking out of here? The last thing they'll expect us to do. This is liable to be in there an hour. We'll wait. Story to 104, come in. This is 104. Go ahead, Lieutenant. It's over three quarters of an hour. You sure our boys left the Wilshire garage? They must have, Lieutenant. They're not in there. What about the patrol cars? Still cruising all intersections on Rodeo from Wilshire to Santa Monica. All right, stay with them, then. Story out. <laughs> We'll get him downstairs. Take us downtown and skip this over. You can have a longer ride than that, Davis.